This may sound like it's going to be a conversation about programmatic. It's not. In fact, this concept has very little to do with the programmatic landscape at all. It has everything to do with how we grow the pie of advertisers using out of home to elevate their brand. So let's start by breaking down what a DSP is and why it's relevant. DSP is short for demand side platform. This is the literal interface used by marketers to deploy ads. This can be Facebook Ads Manager, Google Ads Manager, or even the Trade Desk or Google's DV360. Simply put, a DSP is how marketers access inventory and run campaigns. Pretty simple. For out of home, and more specifically, programmatic digital out of home, there are platforms like Vistar or Outmove. These platforms are designed to be self-serve exclusively for programmatic trading. And that's a good place for us to kind of put our first pin in the map. There are very clearly self-serve DSPs. That's something I think we can all agree to uh, that are designed for programmatic trading. So then what would the opposite of that be? It's not self-service. It would be managed service. And if it wasn't just programmatic, It would be all of out of home. It would be full stack out of home, traditional out of home, programmatic out of home, digital out of home, wild postings, experiential, all of those things, right? Full stack out of home, including all of the formats, all of the buying methods. It's not going to be exclusively limited to digital formats that are only available programmatically, right? So you can quickly see that DSPs exist on these two spectrums. The first spectrum is uh, of self-serve versus managed service. And the second spectrum is as digital programmatic exclusive buying or full stack out of home, traditional buying, programmatic, all things out of home. So you could think about these two operating uh, or, or coexisting on like an X, Y axis, if you will. All right, so you're probably catching on where I'm going with this. What this means is that out of home specialists are DSPs as well. Out-of-home specialists would be classified as a managed service, full-stack DSP. They either offer a technology platform to their clients, or they act as what's known as an iPaaS, an integrated platform as a service, also what we call an agency. Okay, so what does this have to do with the last episode where I was talking about creative agencies and everyone being a DSP? Well, because creative agencies are a type of DSP too. See, each DSP has their own USP, their own unique selling proposition. It's the thing that they believe makes them the better mousetrap. For a programmatic DSP, it might be some really cool targeting uh, dashboard uh, and the benefit of never having to talk to a real person. For an out-of-home specialist, it might be that you offer expert insight and the hands-on experience that scaling brands are looking for. And for a creative agency, it might be that instead of a flashy dashboard or having you know a whole team to handle the media by, you ultimately offer the alignment of building from the creative vision outward. So whether you're a programmatic DSP, an out-of-home specialist, or creative agency, from a competitive standpoint, we are all DSPs. So what are we fighting for? We're fighting for the long tail. If you've never heard of the long tail before, that's okay. We're about to break down what it is and what it means for out of home. And if you have, I think you'll appreciate this perspective on it. But the long tail was a concept popularized by Chris Anderson, who is the editor of Wired.com, really one of the companies that pioneered a lot of the internet. But basically, the long tail boils down into these three pillars. First, that a huge number of mildly popular products can outsell a small number of evergreen hits. Meaning that if you can offer a sufficiently large number of niche products, you can compete with the few best sellers. Think about this in the context of out of home. 80% of out of home's revenue comes from local advertisers. This is across all of the formats from billboards to bus shelters, one sheet posters and laundromats to digital play space screens. Eight out of every $10 spent on our channel is coming from local advertisers. That means that despite the popularity of a few amazing screens we see all the time in Times Square or Las Vegas, that the backbone of our industry is local. Said another way, a huge number of mildly popular products can outsell a few number of hits. Okay, check. First pillar down, next pillar. 
Next pillar, the way to think about this is the unique dynamic of out of home in that anyone can start a media company and we continue to see new networks and new offerings pop up seemingly weekly. But the next pillar is since everyone can now produce their own content, the tail keeps getting longer. The barrier to entry to becoming an out of home media owner is literally zero. You could go into business today offering some new format, hanging posters on telephone poles in the sub suburbs. Uh, you get paid cash in advance and you don't even have to give up a single cent of valuable capital in your business, right? This pillar actually applies doubly here because it also pertains to the democratization of content creation and being able to simply go into your business for yourself. So as the long tail for distribution gets longer, aka ad space, aka new networks, the long tail for content, that is new brands and new products gets longer as well. This just keeps going. It keeps feeding itself because the means of production are now available to everyone. The tail is completely exploded in length and keeps getting longer. Last pillar here, aggregators make accessing niche products easier, which increases the number of products for sale and makes the tail get fatter. Go back to the Brook Air Magenis episode recap and listen to the part about being in as many storefronts as possible as a media owner. There are two types of aggregators online, and the same is true for out of home. There are hybrid aggregators, which catalog physical goods online to make them searchable, and then they ship whatever's ordered. And there are digital aggregators, which only sell digital products that can be bought anytime from anywhere. Hybrid aggregators, these are the out of home specialists who have cataloged all of that historical planning information, know who all the vendors are, who continue to add new networks and new information. That catalog doesn't need to look like a Shopify website. It could be a spreadsheet. It's the concept here that I really want you to take away as most valuable. And the digital aggregators, well, I mean, that's basically like the 101 explanation of what a programmatic DSP offers, right? Only sell digital products that can be bought at any time from anywhere. So we have both. Out of Home has both types of aggregators, meaning that the third and final pillar, well, check to that one too. It turns out that we're all DSPs chasing the long tail. The reality is that programmatic DSPs will continue to be best suited for the new money into our industry and that strategically programmatic DSPs, I believe, should be looking for qualified managed service full stack DSPs. Yes, those are out of home specialists to partner with to ensure that there are more uh, ways that the spend stays within their ecosystem long term. For out-of-home specialists, the newly dubbed managed service full-stack DSP, it's critical to start investing in technology now if you haven't already, because this is the game you are playing in, whether you realize it or not, and regardless of whether you want to participate. Those are the rules, because when the customer's expectation changes for any one thing in their life, changes for all the other things. Amazon Prime created an expectation now that everything is just a day away. Uh, the other day I ordered mouthwash before bed and I had it on my doorstep the next morning. It doesn't matter if it's mouthwash or marketing. When the expectation changes, it changes for everything. For creative agencies, I think it would be smart to partner with programmatic DSPs because uh, you make their offerings more valuable, especially once you can demonstrate that campaigns are more effective with better creative. Otherwise, on the flip side of that, potentially partnering with an out-of-home specialist who can give you scale in being able to offer media buying to your clients as, a, uh, as an additional service to potentially offset the undervalued creative services you're offering. The landscape has changed and collaboration is key. So in the spirit of collaboration, please share this episode with a colleague or a client and start a conversation today. Make sure to check out doubleohired.com, whether you are a growing company that wants to find out of home specific talent or a job seeker ready to write your next chapter. Doubleohired.com is the first completely free career marketplace just for out of home. Post your open roles for free, engage directly with hiring companies for free, all a part of the Out of Home Insider brand. So please make use of it. Right before sitting down to crank this episode out, actually got a, a, a message sent to me via the inbox uh, from, from a gentleman 
thanking us for the career marketplace because it has led to him getting an interview already with a company that he's interested in. Uh, I heard a statistic the other day. It said something like only 3% of resumes even get reviewed by a human. And when you're using sites like Indeed or whatever to just fire off your resume, it makes sense. But what we've got here with DoubleOHire.com is a curated one-to-one environment where you're engaging directly with the person who is hiring for the role, which is sometimes the CEO or founder themselves. It's pretty crazy if you think about it. Okay, that's all for this one. Remember, season one, those are your guest spotlights. Season two, those are your guest spotlight recaps. Season three, that's where this episode's going to go. Those are kind of the op-ed Tim riffs. A lot for you to think about here. So live hungry, stay full. See you all next time.